Mondays, am I right? I say, you can expect two things out of life, death and paranormal activity. 2002's Dark Fall, the journal, covers both in spades. It's a point-and-click game published by the Adventure Company and created by UK-based studio Darkling Room. It was created essentially by a one-man team named Jonathan Bokes. When playing anything this guy has been involved in, I've learned to expect archaic graphics and spotty voice work, but an earnest story with a heart and great atmosphere that a lot of games are sorely lacking. Warning! This game is really, really, really spooky. F*** that hurt. Uh, mm. Oh, so spooky! Our story opens in the house of our unnamed protagonist. A voicemail from your brother plays, pleading you to come to the Dowerton Station Hotel. He's working on the renovation, but something has gone terribly wrong. Our hero jumps on a train headed for Dowerton. In true Silent Hill fashion, you pass out and wake up in a tunnel leading to the hotel. The disembodied voice of a little boy named Timothy acts as your guide. If you weren't perceptive enough to realize what's going on at this point, it's confirmed when Timothy says he's lived in Dowerton since 1941. Being that we've seen an answering machine and whatnot, we can only assume the story takes place around the late 90s. Timothy is dead, is what I'm driving at here. He guides you to the hotel and says he'll help you out when he can, because it doesn't know you're talking. This is where we are introduced to what is truly the main character of the story, the hotel itself. Mr. Bokes does a wonderful job of filling this building with history and life despite being mostly abandoned. Throughout the game, you'll dig up all the secrets the hotel has to offer and piece together the story through letters written between guests and communicating with the ghosts themselves. Unlike the ghosts I'm familiar with, these seem very talkative. Weird? What's this? Yeah, it's called English, buddy. You learn that this hotel is notorious for an incident that occurred on the night of April 29th, 1947, wherein all the guests and staff in the hotel simply vanished, and it's their spirits with whom you are being contacted by. Among them are a failed actress named Matilda Fly, who flees to London to seclude herself from the press, George Crabtree, who was privy to the hotel's ghost activity from the start, and two ghost hunters named Polly White and Nigel Danvers. The latter is featured in other games written by Jonathan Bokes. They showed up with your brother to do some ghost hunting before the place was torn down, but also disappeared. There are a bunch of other characters, but also a mysterious presence that the other spirits are clearly afraid of. George Crabtree was the first guest to come in contact with it. The story is really fleshed out and a lot of fun to unfold. If this was just a book, I'd gladly read it. This is really a realm of video game storytelling that I adore. If I had one complaint about the story, it would be the ending, which is just a little too quaint for my taste. I'm the kind of person that really likes a good downer. I like watching things irreparably fall apart with only the faintest glimmer of hope. I like the tragedy to peak at the end. But here we see an inverse effect. You see this sharp spike and feel good? That's unfortunate. When you're dealing with a genre that's namesake describes the extent of the gameplay, it comes down to the little details of the execution. Be prepared to spend a good deal of time reading letters and notes as this is how the story develops. Sometimes it can feel a bit like an interactive novel. There are no threats to your life, you can't die or anything like that, but there is a strong foreboding atmosphere that sure made me tense. Puzzles are pretty abundant and thankfully make sense in the context of the story. George Crabtree translated a series of alchemical symbols that he thought when read in the correct order and place would imprison the Dark Fall. Paranoid that the Dark Force was onto his plan, he hid each of the symbols with one of the guests in the hotel, each in some kind of clever hiding spot, puzzle box, or safe. The game has no function to keep track of important information pertaining to these puzzles, so it's up to you to hastily scribble them down. Apart from the puzzles, the main draw for me was getting to explore a haunted hotel. As always, I love digging through people's belongings, and this game is practically built on that activity. It wouldn't be an adventure game without the old key stuck on the other side of the doorknob trick. There are also these optional moments where you can speak with some of the ghosts by literally typing in questions and seeing if they respond. So you can't ask them what kind of pizza they like or anything. Mostly ghostly questions like, what's your name? Can you help me? How did you die? 
Later in the game, you come upon all the gadgets that the two ghost hunters left behind. Hey, how do you like that? This includes a sort of ghost o meter that remains in your hood and wiggles whenever there are ghosties about. There is also a set of UV goggles that you are prompted to use in certain locations by a ghostly voice. You can also listen to Nigel's sweet playlist. This is an old game, and even when it was released all those years ago, it still looked pretty old. This is the same year that games like Resident Evil Zero, Halo, and Kingdom Hearts came out. But those are multi-million dollar productions, and this game is comprised of a single indie developer. Despite this, I feel the graphic style only lends to this game's atmosphere. Some objects are a little too symmetrical and smooth looking, and when you activate something, a fuzzy video box overlaps. Oh, it's so good, but in that way, that's not good, you know? There isn't a lot of music in this game. The menu has a little song, and there are some somber strings in the opening and closing credits. These are all in keeping with the tone of the game. Aside from that, there are a variety of ambient tracks that make this hotel real creepy. My favorite would have to be the track that seems specific to the upstairs hallways. It's like a light and subtle scraping of strings that make me want to quickly move into another room to avoid hearing it. Nope. I love the sound effects in general, lots of distant thumps coming from other rooms and flickering light bulbs. You might even hear one of the former residents humming or whistling every now and then. And when two lovers win, they still say I love you. Orally, the least strong aspect is the voice acting. I can guess which one is Jonathan Bokes, as I've heard his voice throughout his games. The problem I think is that he's narrating what should be emotional. He's not throwing himself into the role, he's reading words on a page. Like me. It's whispering my name. It knows my name. I've got to open the door. I've got to open the door. I can't really fault him for this though because he did do everything else. Everyone else does a good job, and I really like the way this game looks and sounds. It's one of few things that give me a nostalgic rush. It's kind of like if you went out into a field and harvested balls of the X Files and Twin Peaks, and then you crushed them into tubs and boiled them in water and lime juice then let it sit overnight, and then you siphoned out all the pure nostalgia, filter it through cloth, and pour it into a barrel, then you add ammonium chloride and stir it for a while, you'll have a good base of nostalgia and memories by the next morning, but then, but then, you add some acetic hydride to the mix, heat it up on a fire for less than an hour, and afterwards, add some baking soda, filter it through cloth a few more times, and you're almost done with that pure Colombian heroin. Wait. Hey, I get it. You're skeptical. You're thinking, you don't know what you're talking about, you bearded dick. And I'd say, listen voice in my head, I know I don't, but I know what I like, and I liked this a lot. I know tons of people that glom onto retro consoles like the N64 and hold it up on a pedestal of unwavering quality. I certainly don't do that with any consoles, but I do have a little loophole for point-and-click adventure games. The story is filled with lots of characters and rich detail, the gameplay is simple and effective, and everything looks genre-appropriate. So, coming from somebody who loves this genre already, I give it two ghosts, an owl, and uh, something else spooky like a uh, jack lantern or some shit. I'm not really big on ghost stories, mainly because of my own experiences, 200 views. I gotta tell the closet about this. Jesus ass! I lent this to you like a month ago. 